every parable has one message. I remember preaching many years ago on, on the Samaritan, the Good Samaritan. Remember how he went down into the, the ditch and he used his garments. He wrapped up the, 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 the man's wounds and poured uh, wine and oil. And I used that as a type of the Holy Ghost and the blood. And the man's Jesus Christ. And the donkey is the church. He put him on the donkey and carried him, or the donkey's the soul winner. Put him on the donkey, carried him to the inn. We make that the church. And the church, he left two pence. And when I return, I'll repay thee. That's the second coming. And the two pence is the Word of God and the Holy Spirit and all that. That's great preaching. It's got nothing to do with the Bible. Yeah. There's nothing in there about that. That's what it true. is, is he said, who is my neighbor? And the emphasis is teaching who his neighbor is. You're not at liberty to make a parable mean anything you want it to mean. You must teach the Word of God for what it really is. You can apply it, make application to all kinds of areas. But a parable teaches one lesson. And in this parable, the fig tree, it teaches one lesson. And he establishes that in these first few verses. Remember what I used to you about the, the, the prodigal and all that business, the sheep and the coin? He started those two verses. They came to him and said, Why do you eat and drink with sinners? Why are you with these sinners? And he said, he spake this parable unto them. The whole thing was directed about their self-righteousness. Follow with me now here in 1 Corinthians 13. There were present at that time, at that season, some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifice. There's no historical reference to this. Uh, there's some who think there might have been an incident some years before. But whether it was recorded in human history or not, these people bring this event to Jesus' mind to remind him, and he reminds them of this incident because they thought those people were such wicked sinners. And Jesus answered, saying unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Or those eighteen upon whom the tower of Siloam fell, who slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men? that dwell in Jerusalem. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. He spake also this parable, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. And then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this tree, and find none. Cut it down, why cometh it the ground? And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I dig about it and dung it, and if it bear fruit well, and if not, then after that thou hast cut it down. After that thou shalt cut it down. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. God, help us to see the importance of this big dream that we speak to our hearts tonight in these few moments that we have together. I pray as the pastor's already prayed, others have prayed, has been our heart's desire for your presence tonight, your power. Yes. We recognize, God, all the good outlines and all the good Bible study and and the good helps that you've given to us Amen. are worthless, Amen. God. If you don't breathe upon us and give Amen. us what's needed, that unction that's needed for preaching, God, uh, we crave it tonight. We need it. We call for it. I get, pray, God, that it not only be easy to preach, but God, give us ears to hear yeah. and to believe. We come in, God. We have so many uh, outside ideas, so many things to influence us. Lord, I pray we close out the world, the flesh, and the devil. In these moments, God, may the Spirit of God deal with our heart individually. We're asking in Jesus' name and for His sake. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Again, as I said, he's emphasizing repentance in this passage. And here is this design of God's forgiveness. Why is it that God makes us one of His own? Here, as I said, the theme is repentance. And he uses the fig tree, which is a very prominent figure in the Bible. We're very familiar with it. In Isaiah 34, verse 4, it says, When the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall I roll, to, uh, roll together as a scroll, and all the, all the lost shall, or all the host shall fall down, and the leaves uh, fall uh, fallen off from the from the vine as, a, as the falling fig from the fig tree. He says in Hosea 9:10, I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. I saw her fathers as the first strips of the fig tree in her first year. Joel uses it in Joel 1.17. He hath laid my wine vine waste, and it has barked my fig tree, and it made it clean, uh, clean bare, and has cast, uh, and has cast it away, and the branches there are made white. Use of the fig tree. The very first tree that's named in the Bible is the fig tree. 
when it's first mentioned, it's used for clothing, self-righteousness. Adam and Eve made clothing of fig leaves. It's their works. They're, they're trying to cover their sin, and it won't work. It leaves are used of fellowship in the Bible. Fruit speaks of fellowship. The tree itself is used of Israel, thus the believer. Israel's not a picture and a type of the church. Israel is a picture and a type of the individual believer. Mm -hmm. Israel as a nation is secure. Israel as a nation will endure eternally. You as an individual believer, thank God, are eternally secure in the heart and the mind of God. Amen. And you need to understand that that picture is up individually. It has three crops a year. It has the early, the main, and the winter crop. The fruit is green. It's hard to be seen unless you come up very close to the tree. And as I said, our Lord curses a, a fig tree in another portion. And uh, because it had no fruit, it had not the fruit that he expected here, he uses it in parabolic form. And he tells them, after giving, after being uh, told about how wicked these people must have been who had had these tragedies happen to them, this awful thing, uh, this tower falling down, killing so many, Pilate grabbing up in, uh, just without any, uh, just indiscriminately a bunch of people, killing them, uh, mingling their blood with the sacrifice. How awful, how wicked they had to have been. Jesus said, you've missed the mark, people. He said, it's not how wicked someone else has been. You need to be concerned about how wicked you've been. You need to learn that you must repent for yourself. And he's not talking to a bunch of ragtag Jews. These are his disciples. These are people that are his followers. Repentance isn't a one-time deal for the Christian. Repentance is a life. When you got saved, you repented, and you spent the rest of your life repenting. We are in a repentant mode. We believe in repentance. And listen, we ought to be bowing our head before God every time we turn around. We're not fit to have eternal life. We didn't enjoy to have it. And he wants to deal with our hearts and the idea of repentance. And so he uses this tree to illustrate it. The first thing that you need to notice about this tree, and that is its protection. It says, he spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. Now, a vineyard's not the normal place for a fig tree. When you planted fig trees, you planted them in an orchard like you do apples. You plant hundreds of them together. And one fig tree isn't going to do a lot of good as far as a commercial crop's concerned. So here is one fig tree planted inside the vineyard. That's not normal. That's not the, that's not the average everyday place for a fig tree. Just one tree. Here's a tree that has advantage of good soil. A tree that has the advantage of a well within that, those walls. The protection of the walls. Personal attention from the master. Over in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Now will I sing to my beloved a song of my beloved touching the vineyard. My well-beloved had, had a vineyard, a very beautiful, well, uh, a beautiful, uh, a beautiful hill. He said, And he fenced it, and he gathered out the stones thereof, and planted it with choice vine, and built a tower in the midst of it. Also made wine press therein, and he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. Verse 3 says, And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judea, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have I done more to my vineyard than what I have done, done in it? Wherefore then I look that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. A vineyard was a place you pulled out the rocks and built a wall. and had, The emphasis is he was good to that vineyard. He gave it every opportunity, every blessing. He brought forth wild grapes. Yeah. He was good to Israel, blessed Israel. All she did was rebel. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Yes, sir. Wonderful protection. That's why in John 15 he said, I am the true vine. Yes. He's wanting the Jews to know that Israel isn't the vine because they brought forth wild grapes. Your connection to Israel will carry you to hell. Mm -hmm. Your connection to Israel, the opinion on Israel, will put you away from the Father. That's right. I want you to know that I'm the true vine. Amen. Amen. I'm the one you need to be a yes. Amen. I'm the one you need to come from. Mm -hmm. And in this passage, we see how God treats that vineyard. This, this, this fig tree is in this vineyard. You know what he's emphasizing? It's protection. It's blessing. Dear Christian, do you realize how God has blessed you? Do you understand what God has done for you? He's placed you in his vineyard as a fig tree. Special. A pet plant. One that he babies and nurtures along, gives the best treatment. We live in a time you cuss our government, and I do every day. 
but it's still the best government on the face of this earth. Yeah. People are dying by the millions to come to this place. Yeah. And yet we have the best government, some of the best jobs. You're making more money now than some of you ever made in your life. And some of you that are a little older are, are retired on the benefits of what you've made. Other men have worked until it was 80 to experience what you have now Amen. in the 50s and 60s. Yeah. You're a blessed people. Amen. Amen. God's been good to you. We mully right. grub around, walk around with long faces. You have homes. <laughs> you have cars. Yeah. You have clothes. Hey. We're coming up on Easter hey. Sunday. Yeah. Some of you women are running around now trying to figure out which new Easter dress. Not a Easter dress, but which one. Yeah. You've yeah. done taken three back already because you didn't like them. And so you're now you've got to look tomorrow and try to find another one. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Only in America, only here on Christmas, do we get all the presents, and the next day everybody's standing in line to take back what they don't want. Yeah. Amen. Good preaching. Why? We're so blessed we haven't got sense to see it. Amen. God's been good yeah. to us. Yeah. Good night. It's not a matter of if. Walk to the closet. It's 15,000 pairs of shoes. And you ask, why? What's wrong with what you got? Well, that it, doesn't it match? Well, it matches, but it matched last year. Don't ever, don't ever get a woman a dress. You make the biggest mistake you've ever made in your life. It isn't the dress. Once you get the dress, then I've got no shoes that go with the dress. Then once you get the dress, I've got a scarf. It's got to go with the shoes. It's got to go with the handbag. It's got to go with the jewelry. It's got to go with the... It's a, it's a bottomless pit that never stops being filled. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Yeah. You go and buy a suit and the guy throws in a tie and you're happy. Hey, Amen. Yeah. No pair of black shoes and everything's all right. Yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man. What are we talking about? The most malcontented bunch of people I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Grumbling about what we don't have. My God, what's wrong with shouting for what we do have? Yes, sir. Amen. Blessings of God. He yes. is drawing a picture. Here we have the Holy Spirit of God, the Word of God. We've got fellowship with one another. A pastor. This church and people in here last night, and they're struggling along in this area and don't have a pastor. You know what that's like until you get into a situation. I've helped many churches like that. That's a heartache. That's difficult. Yeah. And then you get some hiring that comes in, rips the church up, and takes off. God bless you. you got a man of God, someone who loves God's people and loves the work and loves the yes. Lord. My word, you're a blessed people. Amen. Amen. That's right. The purpose, we have been provided, given blessings. God's placed us and protected us. 1 Corinthians 12 is still in the Bible. The Bible says he places us severally in the body as he wills. We're put there. Amen. Yeah. We're positioned in that body. Amen. God didn't just throw us out here like a, uh, <coughs> just hope that we flop together somehow or another. We're where God wants us to be. Yes, there's, 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 there's purpose in what he's yeah, doing. Yeah. Yeah. He right. said, you think they're wicked sinners? Let me tell you about a fig tree that a man put in his... You want to know about a sinner? You want to know about how wicked somebody can be? Here's this blessed, blessed fig tree. I mean, all he wanted all he wanted was some fruit, amen? Yeah. You see his protection, you see the tree's pur purpose. He sought fruit. Now, isn't that mean of this man? Isn't he being ugly? I got a little van out there that we're driving. And I'm going out in a little while and start it. And I'm expecting it to start. You know why? Because I paid for it. That's right. I put gas in it, and I keep it up, and I put new plugs in it when it needs it. And I change the oil every 25 to 3,000 miles. You say, why do you do that? I've lived on the road, put 40-some thousand miles on a vehicle every year. I know what it keeps keeping on the road. You think you could drive five, 6,000 miles without changing oil. You're crazy. That's why you change cars and transmissions and engines all the time. Mm -hmm. Good preaching, brother. Yeah. Yeah. I've had two vehicles that I put over 200,000 miles out. How would you do that? A little old oil change every now and again. Yeah. What are you talking about? It's my van. If it don't start, I'm unhappy. And nobody gets upset with me when I want to jump it if it don't work right. Amen. It's my car. Yeah. Hey, what are you all looking at me like that for? Does that make me... I plant a, a large garden every year. And we put in 18 to 20 uh, tomato plants. And if you treat them right and do right by them, they'll give you two to three bushels of tomatoes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when I went out there and I didn't get two or three bushels of tomatoes, I jerked them out of the ground. 
I was upset with them. I, I, in my office, the farmer puts his corn out here, and he says, well, it just decided not to give corn today, so we're going to go broke. You're out of your mind. He wasn't looking for a cash crop. You're not going to be able to sell anything off in one fig tree. That's right. You'd be doing the good just to get a basket of figs. The first year, they produced very little. What was he after? He's one production. Wasn't much fruit here. More fruit. He was just wanting the normal, natural, expected results. Mm -hmm. Nothing out of the ordinary. He wasn't looking for a little sampler. I have my ideas. He was probably looking for something to put together for his children or maybe to set on his table. Look what I got out of my prize fig tree. There's a man in our church in California where we got saved, Brother Kirkman. And he had uh, four or five different kinds of fruit trees. In California, they grow a lot of fruits. Not only trees, but everything else, too. <laughs> but they have a lot of different kinds of fruit trees. And they, he had five or six. I believe he had two uh, different kinds of peach trees, an apricot tree, an apple tree or two, maybe, and one other exotic tree. And on each of those trees, he produced three and four different kinds of fruit. He had three different kinds of apricots on one apricot tree. Three or four different kinds of apples growing. He, he had a little shed out there, a nice little thing. He grafted these branches from other trees. Oh. Not all of them took. It was work. It was difficult. He had to treat them special. and there, He sprayed them. and looked. But every, every winter, he put together these beautiful fruit baskets of his hand-picked, hand-grown, specially you couldn't buy them anywhere. Yeah. He gave them to his pastor. I know he gave him some one year. He gave them to his children, to his special friends. You know what you are tonight? You're God's special friend. Amen. God's put you in a protected place. He yeah. looked after you, and he's fertilized you, and he's worked in your life and given you all you need to produce yes. for you. Yes. His own personal protection and attention. Amen. When he comes to you, he's looking for fruit. So he's being a little harsh, is he? I don't think so. I'm the vine, you're the branches. Does that know what he says? He said, my father's the husbandman. Every branch that, that he says, uh, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it might bring forth more fruit. Now you're clean through the word which I have spoken on you. I to me and I in you. And the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Without me, you can do nothing. You know that in John 15 about we're to bear fruit, and more fruit, much fruit. Is it un unreasonable that the, that the vine dresser should expect to have vines and have fruit and have grapes on it? We got a crazy idea. You, know, mm. uh, you plant a garden, and I, I never in this world ever expected anything but for my garden to produce. If I fertilized it and watered it and took care of it, amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. I, I usually talk to my tomatoes. I gave them names. Bertha, Betty, Joanne. Usually my worst members, I named ladies, I named my tomato plants. That way I could talk ugly to them, they couldn't talk back. Amen? <laughs> but I'd, uh, I'd, I'd go out and early in the morning, every morning, wait for them tomatoes. And I'd take a cup of coffee, do it. They're so, at night when, uh, when it's so hot, they, they shrivel, almost shrivel up, look like they're dead. But come morning... When the dew is heavy on them, go out and drink coffee, man, they just all perked up and ready yeah. to go, you know. Yeah. And they're just like they're waiting for me every morning to come out and talk to them. I'm telling you now, Bertha, you're right there in that best corner. <laughs> I've been putting, you got special miracle grow on you. I'm looking for at least four bushel of you, girl, and you can get with it. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. That's right. And you know what? When those tomatoes came out, I turned to my wife and I say, hey, honey, there's tomatoes on the tomato plant. Hey, yeah. why? We got tomatoes. No, we didn't do that. That's what's supposed to be there. <laughs> yeah. Why is fruit so important? It's important to God. Yes. It's His purpose in our life. Right. You say, well, what makes it, why? It, because it identifies you. In Matthew 7, 16, ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men get, gather grapes of thorns and figs of thistles? Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them, in Matthew 7, 20. Galatians 5.18, now the works of the flesh are mad. Here's what it is. What is the works of the flesh? It is these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, 
He goes on, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. It identifies. Mm -hmm. If I took a, if I took a acorn, if I took an oak tree and set it, a branch, and I took a banana branch and a pear branch and a and an apple branch and leaf, I said, you you might be able to spot. I could spot the acorn pretty good, the oak leaf. But we'd be hard pressed to identify all those different leaves. But I'll tell you, I lay an acorn down here, a banana, and an apple, and a pear. Everybody in this room knows the difference. Yes. Yeah. Yep. True. God isn't looking for leaves and branches. God's looking for fruit. Nah, it is fruit that identifies you. Yeah. How can he say this? How can a poisoned, bad, evil well bring forth sweet water? How can a sweet well bring forth evil? It's not possible. Yeah. It's not what you say. It's not what you bring on a piece of paper somewhere. It's not something down in a <coughs> baptismal certificate. It's in the fruit. That's yeah. why it's so important. Yes, yeah. preacher. Yeah. You've got so many Christians loaded down with leaves, you can't tell what they are. Amen. Yeah. Spurgeon said many years ago, he said when he was a little boy that his teacher said for them to draw their favorite animal. And so he drew a horse. And the teacher come by and says, uh, Haddon, uh, what is it that you've drawn there, lad? He said, I've drawn a horse. She leaned down and wrote the word horse. She couldn't recognize it, and she knew nobody else would recognize it unless she wrote horse. Spurgeon said that's the way most Christians are. Yeah. If you don't write Christian across the forehead, you wouldn't know who they were. <laughs> that's not how we're supposed to be recognized. That's right. Yeah. Do you know why you're a Christian? Because God produces the fruit in you. If Amen. No fruit, you don't know God. Don't tell me about the number of churches you belong to or the number of times you've been dipped in water or how many times you've been through the Romans Road or the Revelation Highway or how many crying experiences when you pled out to God to save your soul. Don't tell me about that. Tell me about the fruit. He's looking for one thing, fruit. The Amen. purpose of his forgiving you is fruit. Okay. Say, it's harsh. My, how can that? It's normal, natural. Mm -hmm. It identifies you. It invites others. It's the fruit, John 12, 32. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. By this shall all men know you are my disciples. You have love one for another. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. It's the fruit that invites. Why do the animals come to the tree? Why? Why do the, why do the, the bugs and all that come? Do they come for the fruit? Yeah. What draws and invites to the tree? It's the fruit. What is it that's going to draw people to this church? And to you as a Amen. Christian, it's the fruit. The fruit yeah. of love and joy and peace, yeah. not bitterness yeah. and anger, yeah. sitting around with a mully yeah. girl yeah. foot. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't smile. Yeah. I mean, you don't have anything in you to enjoy God. Mm. Yeah. Deader than last year's cracker juice. <laughs> why? You got no God. Oh, you got religion. You know what draw? Everyone stop to ask yourself why nobody wants to be around me? Why can't I get anybody to God? Nothing there to draw. Mm. It's yeah. the fruit that draws. That's good. Yeah, it's the fruit that identifies. It invites people. It's the fruit that imparts life. And God said, Behold, I'll give you every herb bearing seed, Genesis 1.29, and upon the face of the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of the tree, yielding a seed to you, it shall be for meat. It says in Leviticus 25, 19, And the land shall yield her fruit, and ye shall eat your fill, and dwell therein safely. In Joshua 5, 12, And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel man anymore, for they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. In Nehemiah 9, 15, They shall be strong cities and fat land, and possess houses full of goods, wells, did vineyards, and, and olive yards, and fruit trees in abundance that they did eat and were filled and became fat and delighted themselves in the greatness of God. Life comes from the fruit. It's the ministry of the New Testament church to give increase. Mm -hmm. Our fruit, people eat of that and they get strength from that. So many times we're eating our own fruit. Have you ever watched the fruit tree eat its own fruit? It bears fruit for others. Amen. Amen. That's right. Yeah. They don't eat its own fruit. We're devouring ourselves. What's in it for me? Where's my blessing? How come I'm not getting anything? Yeah. Never dawned upon you that you're not supposed to get anything, but you're supposed to be giving something? Right. Good preaching, yeah. brother. That's, That's right. right. 
yeah. it passes out, it gives over. I had a hard time with a, with a tomato plant when I went out there and she said to me, you can't have my tomatoes. Mm. What do you mean I can't have your tomatoes? You don't understand the hard work for these tomatoes. I stood out every day, every day in the hot sun for these tomatoes. I stood out here at the nighttime. I fought off these bugs. I fought off all these animals. I held these up day on in and day out, just waiting for them to ripen up. And they're mine. I grew them. I raised them. They're mine. Yeah. I'm going to cut her off about that far off from the ground. That doesn't even make sense. It's ludicrous. Think, think somehow or another that what we produce in our life is ours. Right. We don't have anything but what for God. Amen. It's fruit that identifies. It's fruit that in bites and parts. It's fruit that brings the increase. Mm -hmm. It's fruit that gives you integrity. A good tree brings forth good tree cannot bring forth corrupt fruit, nor can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Is that not right? Yeah. We used to have a cherry tree out by our house, large one, got split by a lightning storm. We used to go pick a lot of cherries off that. It was on state ground, so nobody took care of it. I didn't have the money to spray it every year. In those first couple, three years, man, we just got all kinds of beautiful cherries off that tree. There would be a few that had bugs in them, but for the most part, it was a good tree. You have a few bad cherries and still have a good tree. Right. Amen. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Just a few bad cherries doesn't make it a bad tree. Right. Same thing when those bugs finally got into those cherries. You know what happens? You don't spray. The blossoms come out. Those little bugs go inside the cherry blossom. And then it lays its egg in there. And then that blossom closes up and produces a cherry. And inside there's a little larva. And it hatches out. And it's bad cherries. Now, we found a lot of good cherries on that tree, but most of them were bad. It became a bad tree. That's Nothing right. any different about that tree than the year before. Still the same tree, the fruit's bad. And so the tree's called bad. Your integrity, yes. who you are, who you say you are, is all wrapped up in the fruit that you bear. Amen. Yeah. It's just beyond me. I planted it. It was a tomato plant. It said it was a tomato plant. It had tomato plant. I remember one year my boys went down. We was and they didn't know we 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 always put the envelopes at the end. You know, carrots, beets, uh, radishes. You know what I'm talking about? Because you don't know what them little boogers are until they get up boys. After you, after you farmed a while, you know you can tell. But basically, you know, weeds get overgrown, and I. I had put my melons one time real close to my cucumbers. Don't ever do that. I'm just giving you a little farming hint. Because those vines will get together. You have the sorriest taste of melons you ever ate in your life. And uh, they don't pollinate, but they do infiltrate somehow or another. They mess each other up. But anyway, I did, and I, they went down through there with a weed whacker, man. They took all my envelopes, my steaks, and everything out. And when it come up, I didn't know soup from nuts. I didn't know what it was. I knew I put certain things in certain places. I really wasn't too sure how to, to thin them out. But I tell you, when the fruit, when the carrot came and I popped it up, that was a carrot. Yeah. Amen. It brought integrity back yeah. to the carrot. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. Now, if I had gone out to them tomato plants and I popped green peppers, I'd have been in trouble. Okay. Something wrong with it. Green peppers could have been wonderful. That's not the point. I put tomato plants in there. Never did happen, you know. It just didn't happen. I never did that, that melons and uh, cucumbers straight around until they come out. And then, you know, the, the summer squash got the big yellow, big, big old yellow flowers. They're not a hard spot. Here I had them poor little melons down in the midst of cucumbers. The cucumbers in down around. You talk about a mess. It wasn't hard to tell which vine was which because you found the right thing hanging off the vine. <laughs> Amen. That's right. God makes it simple for us ignorant folk, doesn't he? Hey, anybody can farm. It. it make a lot of sense, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, you put it in, it comes out. Yeah. It's just what you expect to be there. God's looking for fruit, people. Yes. Yeah. What kind of fruit are you talking about? It's easy. He said he'd like to see some fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto his name. That's over Hebrews 13, 15. The fruit of our lips. Wouldn't that be good? Mm -hmm. Can't you do that? When he comes into the vineyard, and look, can't you give him some fruit of your lips? You're a good God. Amen. I love you. Amen. I'm glad to be in church. Amen. You ought to taste a permanent smile.
smile on your face and leave it there. Yeah. Yeah. Stop calling yourself Christian. Where in God's name you get off to ever have a bad day? Where do we get that business? Our worst day being saved is better than any great day we had when we was lost. Yes, yeah. yeah. Christians right. spent half the time looking backwards. Yeah. And nothing back there. You sound like that children of Israel in the wilderness. Mm. Man, if we could just have the garlics and the leeks and yes. the onions. We, they never ate garlic, leeks, and onions. They barely got straw to make bricks with. They were living in bondage. Isn't it odd how we remember the world? Mm. What was good about dope and hell and living like a junkyard dog? Mm. What was good about whore hopping around, getting up in the morning, not even knowing where you've been or who you've been? Mm. Nothing good about that. Nothing. Amen. You hear me? Nothing good about Amen. that. Amen. Yeah. God's good to us now, is he not? Amen. 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 Yes. What's wrong with a little praise of our lips? That's fruit. What's wrong with Romans 6.22? For now being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness. Wouldn't the fruit of holiness be something? Boy, I know that makes some of you really scared, holiness. Man, a lie. That's fruit unto God. Yeah. He says, uh, he says, your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. He talks about fruit of good works in Colossians 1.10, that you might walk worthy of the Lord, all pleasing, having fruit in every good work. What's wrong with the fruit of souls? What's wrong with the fruit of giving? When therefore I have performed this, Paul says in Romans 15, and have sealed, sealed to them this fruit, I will come by on you in Spain. He's talking about the money he was carrying. Mm. When I take this money and I get it sealed and all settled, that's the fruit of giving. Boy, getting quiet in it. Yeah. What about the fruit of chastisement? Mm. He says, the chastisement for the present seemeth not to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruits of righteousness. Amen. What chastisement is supposed to produce? That word yieldeth is a farming term. Yeah. We talk about an acre yielding so much. That's right. Yeah. When God chastens you, it's to yield the peaceable fruits of right. That's how we know you're saved or lost. Yeah. Everybody gets cancer. Everybody gets a heart attack. I've had a couple, three myself. Everybody has, everybody. This precious man that was so excited the other night, Brother Don, I think is his name. Yeah. He, uh, about being in church and just being saved. Bless his heart. I've watched him for many yeah. years. He just glad, I mean, the older man just loves God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's so proud about being able to work a little bit, get around, have his health. Yeah. Come in here last night, he says, Preacher, pray for me. I'm real, real short of breath. I, I just, I just don't know. I said, we'll pray for you tonight. Called today, I was concerned. He's in the hospital. My understanding, he wept because he couldn't be in church. Yeah, that's right. Did. Did, did. did I miss did. it, Brother Combs? Is that not true? He did. <coughs> you know what most people do when they have a heart attack? Why did God do this to me? Yeah. 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 Most people, the car blows up. Ah, that's just it. Yeah, see, there you go again. That's your God for you. Like, hey, look, look. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of fruit does chest? Everybody gets sick. Lost people die of cancer. Yes, sir. Uh, what's the difference between the saved and the lost? The same. When you are chasing it, yields the peaceable fruits of righteousness. Amen. He's a good God, Job yeah. said. He, though he's Amen. slain it. I appreciate yeah. it. Job said, I, Lord. the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The saved people are chastened and tried. Their response is, he's a good God and he loves me. Yes. He's not trying to hurt me. He's trying to bless right. me. Right, amen. Talking to yeah. these precious kids in the back, find out their little baby having trouble with its feet. It's had, had surgery five hours after it was born. Can't you understand what a young couple could say? Yes, Don't you understand yeah. the response they could have? Right. What have we ever done wrong? We try to serve God. God give us a baby like this. Yes. No. Her response to me tonight was, God's been doing some good things. It looks hey. like he might be a yeah. sheep. Whatever it is, is going to be better. Why? Save people respond with the peaceable fruits of righteousness. Amen. Amen. I don't respond that way. Well, I appreciate good that. Good salvation might help you. Amen. Everything sparkles as gold. Just saying so don't make so. Amen. Yeah. God forgave you had a purpose, and that was to gain fruit. Amen. <coughs> trees protection, the tree's purpose, it's a privilege. What a privilege. God's worked in our lives. Yes. Answered our prayers. Yes. Given us grace. Forgiven and restored us many times. 
worked in our families, been good to us. We have the best. Amen. 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 We're in the best place, bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. Yes, we have the best soil, a changed heart. We have the best care, the Holy Spirit of God. We have the best food, the Word of God. Romans 2, 4 says, O despise of thou the riches of the goodness and the forbearance and the long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God, the goodness of God, leadeth thee to repentance. Amen. Amen. God's so good, he let you breathe today. Amen. Amen. Yes. Be here in church. That's right. What a good God. He comes and he sees it, and there's no fruit after three years. Why cumber the ground? Cut it down. You see, when love is spurned, violated, adulterated, the violated person is hurt. Do you know why a man will take a gun and shoot a woman and her lover? Because he hates her? He loves her so much that her adulterous affair sends him into a rage. You know why God cut off Israel? Because he loved Israel and was so good to her and so good to her as well. Mm -hmm. You know why this man wants to cut this tree down? He's done all he can do. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he doesn't ask him for any astronomical performance. He just wanted faithful, honest, normal, natural production. He yeah. says, cut it down. Except you repent. Is that where we started? Yeah. You shall all likewise be. You yes. think those people are wicked? Let me tell you about a wicked tree. Mm -hmm. A wicked person who claims to know God, mm -hmm. who claims to love God, who claims to be forgiven and cleansed in the blood of the Lamb and produces nothing. <coughs> That's. <coughs> yes. Am I not telling the truth? That's it. Amen. Amen. That yeah. is wicked. Thank God. For an unnamed servant. In the Bible, there's two or three unnamed servants. Remember that servant in the book of Ruth that came to Boaz? Boaz says, who's that? Uh, who's that Moabitish girl over there? Oh, let me tell you about her, Boaz. That's, that's Ruth. She came yeah. up to Naomi. That's Naomi's daughter-in-law. But she's out here every day. She's in the field. She doesn't go anywhere else. She does her work. She tends to her business. She takes care of her mother-in-law. Hey folks, when we're in the field working and our Boaz is in heaven, we have an unnamed servant called the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. He's Amen. watching what we're doing. He knows where we are. Mm -hmm. He's reporting back to Boaz. Amen. Amen. This servant comes to the master and says, Don't cut it down, Boaz. Don't cut it down. Let me dig and dump. Both of those are unpleasant tasks. I can remember we used to have to dig along some of our rooted plants. By the time we got done digging and put some fertilizer down Mahuna, if you don't know what that is, and put it down along that, that plant looked like it was going to die. Give it a couple of days, boy, and it just perked right up. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yep. I can remember telling the kids, Dad, they'd say, we're going to kill these plants. Get down there close. Don't want to get too close. Get down right in those roots. But Dad, get in and they'll be all right. They'll snap back. Put a little, we put a little fertilizer wet them down, they look like they're half beat to death. Mm -hmm. Boy, those plants just come up a couple of days, get strong, you see that corn just shoot up. Mm -hmm. Carrots just go crazy. Wow. Yeah. Digging and dumping. Mm -hmm. Holy Ghost is in the digging and dumping business. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's true. He's interceding for you and me tonight. Yes, right. He's saying, Father, let's give them another year. Okay. They don't bear fruit, then cut it down. Mm -hmm. He says, that's not true. The Bible says he gave people of Noah 120 years. He says in Revelation, even that old Lord Jezebel, he gave space to repent. <coughs> you all hear me? Yeah. We have a good, gracious God. Yeah. Yeah. My wife is what you call a better homes and gardens woman. She, I told you I didn't understand women last night. I still don't. <laughs> to me, a bathroom is a place of function. Amen? Hey. <laughs> but to a woman, it's a place to decorate. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. Yes, preacher. When we first got married 37, 40 years ago anyway, a long time ago, we, <laughs> you know, I, like I said, a bathroom is what you use. Yeah. And so I go in there, and we're not married a month, and I've got trees hanging in my bathroom. Uh -oh. <laughs> I got 
special washcloths and yeah. towels. Amen. And so I washed my hands and I used one. Yeah. Who thought I committed the cardinal sin? <laughs> what are you doing? I said, it's a towel. It's not for that. Well, what's it for? To look at. I said, you're crazy. <laughs> I got in the shower and I didn't have any soap and she had a dish of these little flowery things. <laughs> I knew there's soap. I could smell it. I picked it up and I said, well, hey, any port in the storm? I started, she had a canary. Yeah. <laughs> That's women. I don't understand that foolishness. Yeah. But they, you know, those days a bathroom was to decorate and hang all forms of women's underwear in. I, those days everything hung in there. And I, she liked going to the to the orchards, the apple orchards. And I don't care nothing about apple orchards. I want apples. I go to Kroger's. They're all washed and they're shiny in a plastic bag. That's where I buy my apples. Amen. You go to the orchard. They've already got the best apples picked. They left you nothing. But what's rotten and they don't want. And then you walk around the orchard, step on half rotten apples, and be stung. Amen? Yeah. But she wants to take the kids every year. We go to the apple orchard. I don't want to go. We say, why did you go? I like being married. Amen? Yeah. I took the kids and we went. I got, uh, they were real little, and I had them in the, in the orchard, and I said, hey, kids, listen, listen. And I said, what? I said, can you hear the trees growing? Can you hear the apples growing? Of course, my daughter, a little older, she says, what? I said, listen, you can hear the trees growing. I said, what do you mean? I said, listen. Can't you hear the trees going? Oh, make apples. Oh, make apples. Get that water out of the ground. Oh, get that photosynthesis going. Oh, a little osmosis here. Oh, got to get a little iron here. <coughs> Haven't you heard them? Haven't you gone out in the corn? You know, listen to the corn go, oh, make corn. Oh, get that water out of it. Haven't you heard me do that? Sure. You know, corn's natural, normal result. There's no strain. That apple tree's not strained. It's just normal. It's abiding. It's just simply abiding. I used to have a tomato plant. Couldn't get her to produce nothing. Every morning I'd come out, she'd be over by the Willow Tree Fellowship. <laughs> and I'd say, Betty, get away from the willow tree. You've got to get back over here before the sun gets up. She'd come in, you know, I'd get her rooted back down again. A couple days later, she'd be down by the pond. I said, Betty, get back up here. You know, I never got any good tomatoes out of her. Because she never abide. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I like it. What are you talking about? When he said, ye shall bear fruit, that's not a command. You can't make fruit. Fruit is produced. Yeah. That's a promise. Mm -hmm. God's made a promise to you. Yeah. If you abide, you will bear fruit. That's right. You can't make fruit. Be Christian. I'm going to be sweet today. <laughs> I'm going to put forth the Holy Ghost. Some of you start your days out like that every day. Oh, God, fill me. Oh, oh God, fill me. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be filled today. I'm going to look at no dirty books. I'm not going to listen to any dirty talk. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be angry today. I'm not going to get mad at my daughter-in-law. I'm not going to get mad at my father-in-law. I'm, I'm going to be... I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and then you wonder why you fail. <laughs> Fruit is a result of life, not labor. This building is production, but it's dead. You can make a machine and it'll work. It takes labor to make a machine. But that machine is dead. You take an apple. It took a lot of labor to get that. You want know what's going on inside of a plant? Osmosis down in the roots and the, and the photosynthesis that takes place, the chemical, the chemical changing that's going on. That plant is working night and day inside. And what comes out of that is life. Something that can impart life. That's it. Yeah. You know what we got in most of our churches? Mechanics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got work and labor. No life, no love. Amen. Return. You're trying to be something that only God can make you. Amen. And you can't be made that without being first born again. Yeah. What's the warning in our passage? Talking to save people. Except you. Man. You think these sinners out here are so wicked. You think those boys and kids down at Michigan State are so vile people. And they are vile. And they'll never get what they really deserve. 
we got them all around us, wicked. Sinners are wicked. A car flies off the road into a hole out here, and some drunkard goes off in eternity. He probably didn't get killed soon enough. He's probably hurt enough people in his life. He deserved to die. Go. I understand all that. But you know what Jesus says? Except ye repent. Yeah. Why? Me? Are you that fig tree that just sucked? Howard Hendrickson said of this tree. He said, worse, worse than useless. It took up space that belonged to another. It sucked up the vitamins and the minerals and the food that others could enjoy just for itself. That's wicked. But we don't look at ourselves like that, do we? Because we don't drink, we don't smoke, we don't cuss. We come to church two or three times a week. We the good people. Tell you what we need. We need to repent. Yeah. God's not asking you to do anything but normal, natural production. A good little I love you once in a while in public. Yeah. Do wonders. Yeah. Good, good little not just you know what do you wonders? Stand in the cash register. And somebody down a little away say, use God's name in vain. Mm -hmm. You just turn and say, Sir, that's my heavenly father. If you don't mind, I would appreciate you not talking about him like that. You said they might even get ugly with me. You'd be surprised. <coughs> You'd be surprised. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sir, can I tell you the Lord loves you? Mm -hmm. Doctor told me today that probably not a whole lot we can do for me. There's not much they can do to help me. You know what you could do? You could say, Lord, you've been better than me already than I deserve. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Just maybe folks have come to our way of belief. Stand to our feet. Your heads are bowed. Lord, you're listening tonight. The revival group comes. We'll come at the house of God. Things are going to get right. It's going to get right with God's people. We're going to have to stop complimenting ourselves and start condemning them, recognizing our need to be fruitful in a very unfruitful age. God, I love you. Bless these precious people. Help us in this invitation. Lord, may we do that which is pleasing to you. God, we, we are definitely in need. We need to repent. We need to return to those things that are pleasing to thee. God, what a joy it has been to be reminded tonight that we are a blessed people and been given much. God, may we see it, I pray in Jesus' name. Why don't you come as our sister plays? Been our custom these last few services. Just slip out of your place and come. So, preacher, I, I come, everybody, to think I'm so wicked. Hey.